Welcome. Welcome back to our podcast. It, uh, it is lovely to have you all. And uh, again, let's try and, uh, and have a fantastic time here. Let me present to you one of our hosts, a uh, powerful coach, prolific author, the coach of coaches, Richard Haggerty. Hello, Orestes. Thank you so much. What a wonderful introduction. It is really exciting to be here. And look, um, I'm happy to roll with this and uh, see where things see where things take us because uh, you're there in Mexico, I'm here in the UK, and uh, we have worked for many, many years with people internationally and all over the world. And we love seeing people change their minds. We love seeing people transform. We love seeing people become happier, more productive. Um, and change is possible, you know, and uh, and so, um, yeah, I'm just excited to go with this. And I, um, yeah, I, 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 I feel like I feel like some changes on the horizon. And I don't know what exactly, but I'm willing to trust my unconscious. Absolutely. That sounds amazing. Uh, and your other host, it's uh, Orestes from uh, Less Anxiety Today. Feel free to check out our website and uh, we're always happy to help you out. Uh, Richard, where can people reach you? So um, probably the, um, the easiest way to reach me is on, uh, um, I would say connect with me on uh, Twitter. So Richard Haggerty on Twitter, or you can hook up with me on Facebook, also Richard Haggerty. And of course you can, uh, you can just check out all of these details in the, in the show notes. So, Richard, some exciting stuff is going on in, in London these days. Uh, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to, to hear about it or, or if you had the opportunity to visit or I don't know if they are offering some, some online opportunities to check in. But I just really love the fact that such a thing exists. Um, we know that Mental Health Day was just uh, on the 10th of October, uh, 10th of October. But there is an mm -hmm. entire, almost an entire week event is going on uh, in London the, called the Mental Wealth Festival, which really dives in deep with, the, uh, with all of the ideas and all of the different aspects of mental health. Hmm. Look, it's, look, it's brilliant, Orestes. And, and even that, that's, that's just a sign, isn't it? Of the, it's a sign of the times. You know, here in the UK, we have probably the same as around the world, that we have a lot of challenges. You know, the, the biggest killer of men under 30s is unfortunately suicide. It's not even cancer. It's not heart disease, not anything. It's not anything else. It is, you know, it is the kind of challenges that, that, that they face growing up into uh, adults in our society, managing their environment, managing their well-being. And so uh, on the one hand, that's, that's tragic. On the other hand, there is... Um, you know there are lots where there's a lot we can do about it a lot we can do about it and uh and i i think um i think if we use all the tools in our arsenal um uh the research tools community-based tools um there is uh, there's every reason to be very very optimistic absolutely and uh, and i really love the idea of just how much awareness there is at this point i mean i'm just uh I'm just loving just browsing, uh, for example, today's program today, we're recording this on the 11th. Um, there is an all day summit that is focusing on, uh, on workplace, mental health and well-being, which I believe is just a huge insight. It is amazing mm. to just to understand how much more you can achieve when your mind is in the right place when you have the right point of view the right mindset the kind of motivation that is required that uh, to to keep you going and focused on your goals and understanding how personal goals are really important to be intertwined with the company's goals so that uh, so that actually progress not only happens but it's also satisfying and generates even more advances um richard your take on uh, on mental yeah. health in the workplace well i think it's a really um look 
there is um i've just finished reviewing a a, a, a book for a um a friend of mine and a colleague who's the top nocebo expert in the uk probably in terms of research dr jeremy howick and he's um yeah. so in fact he's just, just released uh, just uh, spend a few seconds explaining nocebo just for those in philip sure I'm of course of course so basically we have the placebo effect whereby um your expectation um can cause real uh, neurophysiological effects so that the classic thing is taking a pill but it can happen in lots and lots of different ways um where your sense of expectation will create um some positive benefit so for instance there are studies where somebody can take a um, somebody who has even parkinson's can take a um uh, essentially a sugar pill an inert pill the the researcher says um some people in some studies have received benefit from this and um in a significant number of cases maybe 20% of cases people will um experience uh, dopamine release inside their body and have um, at least temporary relief of those symptoms quite amazing Absolutely. Now, the 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 opposite side of that is the nocebo effect where it's just the and what what happens is uh, um researchers are required to tell people all the things that can go wrong um or or potentially go wrong with any treatments when participants are coming into trials and unfortunately what is happening is um 5 to 10% maybe more of people were having to pull out of trials and studies because of um nocebo related um problems so they were having a real physiological response to the things that were happening now the i'm not exciting at all i i just observed the exact same thing with uh with my daughter yep whom uh just underwent a small um mostly cosmetic but it was uh it was also corrective um surgery mm -hmm. and uh i constantly i mean i feel fortunate because i could do that i i, I notice mm -hmm. this when it happens and i could pull her back but i constantly had to pull her back from the places where her mind just went naturally automatically mm -hmm just because of all the fair warnings and and also the doctor trying to make sure that uh you know he's not going to be held uh held responsible held responsible for things and you know nothing goes goes wrong mm. and, and he's basically covers his practice <laughs> person yeah it, 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 exactly so um that that ties in nicely because you know the if we think back to to the workplace the same as you mentioned happening with your daughter people if the mind can do that all right just by um just by uh, someone saying you know potentially this could happen then mm -hmm. um imagine what happens in the workplace when someone starts to anticipate that maybe a team doesn't like them or they don't fit in or they're not welcome or maybe that they have not um they're not producing um the quality of work that they think their their boss might want them to produce now hmm. this is really important because the biggest change or one of the most sig significant factors and again this was in uh, in Jeremy's book um, Dr you which I just uh, was reviewed for him it the environment is one of the biggest factors in how you um how you develop and how you are going to basically your 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 happiness in terms of what you're going to achieve in life mm -hmm. and even when you know about that people still underestimate it so when you have these two factors of the environment and the kind of suggestions that are that are maybe go that are that are going there the verbal suggestions and also the non-verbal suggestions people can uh, have an awful lot of anxiety you know and we know this because people get excited on a friday <laughs> when they're finishing their work and on sunday they feel anxious when they're going in and that seems to me crazy if you're going to spend that much of your life doing something right. that you would go through those kind of cycles i mean just imagine just imagine the concept of of actually being able to understand what is happening take charge of it take control of that process mm -hmm. and actually I mean as a boss you are excited to do what you're doing mm -hmm. you, are, you, you want I mean 
just if we look at the basic concept of how money is generated, how value is generated, mm -hmm. you have to provide something that is more valuable to people than some cash in their pocket. So mm -hmm. you're basically trying to give something valuable. You want to make sure that people are happy with what you're buying. And especially today, now that that really snake oil salesmen will be exposed within the first few days, if not within the first few hours of trying to sell something. Unless, of course, you know, they slip through the cracks of, of social media and, and, and whatnot. You know, they dishonest people will always find a way. But what I'm what I'm trying to say is that imagine that basically you are generating more value in the things that you are giving you will find your method of generating that at a, at a profit for yourself so that you are not you are not spending yourself in the process of generating value but once you do it's basically something positive that you're giving people and you're excited to see people happy with it you're excited to know that you are doing a good job that you are getting a, some good results now Imagine being able to share this with your workforce. If you can mm -hmm. have your people, your team be excited with you to the extent that, that they enjoy what they're doing, that they're looking forward to the feedback, that they are happy when things are working, then the thing that you just described doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. you're excited about making things work then you can really create a good work mm -hmm. environment uh and and just a positive space and a, pl a positive place for people to help you deliver all of that value so what yeah, absolutely about, uh, about how that uh how uh, your friend's book is, is helping with that that's really interesting yeah definitely well you know the the thing is um it was interesting. We had a discussion. In fact, now he's an academic. He's asked me to teach him hypnosis and self-hypnosis, which I'm really looking forward to. Mm, nice. But he, um, you know, he's, he's, we've talked a lot about the placebo effect. And, and I mentioned him about priming. Now, he didn't talk about priming in his book. And actually, um, it's a bit tucked away in the research. But here's the thing. Um, the psychology around priming is in a bit of a state of flux at the moment because they're not able, they've got a problem with, reproducing experiments that they did now here's why i think okay they will do experiments that showed that if you for instance somebody was going into an interview and you gave them um uh, um uh, they uh, the the person who was interviewing was maybe given a cold drink uh, before he went in they would tend to have um more cold feelings towards the person they were interviewing they didn't even know that but it primes them to like the person coming in less if somebody, if uh, an experimenter met them in the lift and gave them a hot drink, they were primed to have uh, more warm feelings. Now, this is all great. We can kind of understand this as hypnotist, the idea of priming. Yes. But here's where it gets interesting. Depending on who sets up those experiments, they will either get those results or not get them. And I think what's happening... How very much so is the person pr doing the priming uh, manages to well, prime well well exactly look here's here's the thing i think priming undoubtedly works but it works because of the expectation in those contexts it's going to work because of the expectation of the person who is doing the priming so all it boils down to is if the person expects that um, things are going to go well and if they expect that the person coming in can do their job it will be reflected in that person doing their job well. And so we can trigger the placebo effect in ourselves and in other people through our own expectations. So I call these priming placebos, which ties in very nicely with what you were saying about the, the kind of the sort of the attitude adjustment that you've that, that you've that you've got to make, that you really want to make with yourself. And we've had, there have been loads and loads of studies around this, you know, um, ones where they, they, they spent a year, they said to some teachers, you know, in fact, actually, Jeremy mentioned in his book, I've read it a number of times, but, you know, these teachers in, in America, uh, I believe it was in the 70s, maybe in the 80s, were told, these people are your, your uh, A-grade students. 
And these pile over here, they're not so great. A year later, they went back and the students who they had, uh, the teachers had been told were A-grade students were flying. They were succeeding well above everyone else. The thing is, they were tricked at the start. They were completely randomized. There was no truth to any of it. And yet, once they internalized that and believed that, they primed to create that response in other people. And that, that I mean, for me, is so powerful. Absolutely. I mean, just think about it. Uh, the interesting thing is medicine is aware of this. Yes. Most of your medical studies, um, especially anything that, that includes um, administering any type of drug, will have to have double, sometimes triple filters to try and remove these effects just because of how powerful they are. Mm -hmm. you, you probably heard of double and triple blind studies. What, why is that important? It's because your, your own expectation is going to influence your results. You already mentioned the placebo effect, which is just the expectation of because you're in a study, you are probably going to get something that is beneficial. Yeah. So this is going to be cut. <laughs> <laughs> or not <laughs> uh, yeah okay all right that's that's also a possibility you know life happens <laughs> so For sure you already mentioned the the placebo effect which mm -hmm. is, uh, which is something very powerful you definitely just because of your expectation of hoping to have some kind of a positive result of your natural natural idea that just because you're participating in a study, something positive is likely to happen. Yes. So you need to filter that usually by giving at least a part of a control group, only sugar pills, only okay. placebo, which mm -hmm. is not supposed to have an effect. But the interesting thing that it does <laughs> it, it does for sure and add on top of that the priming effect which is another person the person that is administering mm -hmm. placebo or the actual drug also mm -hmm. has to be confused just yep. to make sure that their expectation is not going yep. to change your experience yeah agreed you know, Oh yeah, I'm giving Agreed. these people the right thing that is going to help them. Oh, I'm yep. giving these people the, the inert pill Agreed. that are not going to do anything. That yep. in medical studies, they have found out that that also has an effect. And aside yep. from all of the respect to all of the people that are doing this research, I definitely want to add that we do want to appreciate something that is so powerful that it's happening that it needs to be filtered mm -hmm. it needs to be filtered in the studies but if we mm -hmm. can learn and really dig deep on how we can actually take advantage of yep. the extremely powerful effects yes then we can really make sure that healing happens or it, at least it's it's enhanced yep I understand yeah. you definitely want to make sure that in a precise trial, you separate what is already in the person from what you are putting in their body, be it an injection, a pill, or mm -hmm. whatever it is. You definitely want to separate that because you want to be clear on what physiological effect that particular pill has. Now, for healing, though, once we understand what that pill does, I think it's really important to bring all of the things that we filtered out for the study, we bring it all back mm -hmm. to help them again, to make sure, sure. That they take advantage of all of that in the best way. Because another thing that you indirectly pointed out is that that same power might just end up being used in the wrong way. For sure. With negative expectation, with, with fear with with negative visualizations of the future with uh, um, being afraid of some things going wrong and that yes. also has an effect 
Yeah, absolutely. Look, it's fascinating, Orestes. I think that I, I really like your um, your idea because the 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 key for me, you know, when I when I first came across this idea, it blew my mind. Okay, that the research that a guy called uh, Ted Kapuchek was doing showed that reliably with certain types of things, for instance, IBS, that 42% of the time people would just get better anyway. All right. So it, so so we have this other kind of layer, which is people just can get better anyway, spontaneously, 42% of the time. However, when you introduce a placebo, um, in this case, it was the, the, the sugar pill, but given with a nice bedside manner, like they would take time, the doctor would deliberately spend time with the patient, would listen to them, would ask questions, put them at ease, okay? And this was enough to trigger the placebo effect. And now 62% of the people would get better. Now, I want to take this a step further from, from your idea. So I call this the 20% rule, or call the 62% rule. As hypnotists and as communicators, if we have the right mindset, imagine this, that we expect that, or as a coach or as a person in the workforce or as a parent, or as a, as a partner, that we expect that the other person can handle it and can live their life well and can absolutely uh, do whatever they need to do, that we expect that and hold that in our minds. And just imagine this, that every time we look at them or every time we say anything, we have a 62% chance, if we're paying attention, to trigger the placebo effect. Now we know this is possible because the placebo effect actually is a very short, it seems like um, it's a very short lived um, kind of change in the brain. There's this change in the pre, pre sort of uh, the, in, in the cortex or so the premotor parts of the brain, certainly in the amygdala. So it can be quite a quick change, like or, or something that happens quite quickly, but it's the placebo response. It's all the things that happen afterwards this trail of expectation that happens as a result of that switch inside their brain. And I like to imagine that in every interaction, you have multiple opportunities to get people to that 62%, or maybe even more hmm. as an experienced hypnotist and coach. Yeah. And I really like this. And the only requirement is that you do whatever you need to do to change your environment, to change yourself, to change your mindset, or to just make sure that you have a solid expectation that the other person can do what they need, that, that they need to do, that they have at least the capability to do that. Because when you have that, then you can help be part of the environment that becomes the success for them. Absolutely. And, uh, and that is something that uh, I think kind of both of us have been uh, focusing on. On, on how to how to help others achieve that and uh, you know plug 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 uh, watch uh, make sure that you check out the uh, less anxiety today video channel on YouTube this is probably gonna be there I don't know how we're going to be um, sharing this but definitely check that out because that is going to be one where I'm trying to make sure that you get a daily dose of just activating that. 62% of positive thought and, and positive outlook on life and how to feel better, how to focus in the, in the right way. Um, and of course, Richard and also myself, we, are, we, we still have some time to, to help others one-on-one, -on -one, which is a very powerful way in which you can do this. Now, I also want Richard for, to make sure that our listeners uh take away some strategies strategies that they can apply because it's wonderful to have someone else in your life that notices mm -hmm. those tiny opportunities to get you closer to that positive effect every uh, every now and then uh and of course we will continue to try and do our best to to help you get there mm -hmm. what are things that uh that what are simple little things because i do i do not want to overload uh, our listeners usually you know they all have their their life already somehow in in some kind of a balance <laughs> some mm. appreciate that balance some dislike yep. the parts of it that yep. they don't feel like is working yep. very well but i definitely want to um help our listeners take away 
sure. at least one or two just small strategies that they can use on a daily sure. basis that will help them get themselves closer to their best version. Sure. Well, my 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 top tip in the, in this regard is really building, starting to build a second brain. And um, there's a lot more we can say on this. And uh, um, I'm running a course on that at the moment. I'm also writing a book on it. But here's the here's the basic idea that you want to write down your thoughts and ideas, okay? Because one of the re the biggest reason that people get stuck um, is because they get stuck in their thinking. They're trying to solve the problem, analyze it, discuss it, look at new things all inside their mind. It cannot be done. So thinking happens when it's externalized in writing. That's the first thing. And a specific strategy to, to get going with that is, I would take some time to realize this. If, um, as we've said, it's true to say that having somebody believe in you or have a positive expectation is what makes the difference. It makes a huge, huge difference in the environment and triggering the placebo effect in terms of somebody else living up to those expectations, even if it's not stated. It's really worth taking some time to think of one or two people in your life who, or times when somebody said to you, you know, you can do this, or you, um, you were with somebody in an environment where they believed in you, or you just suddenly found yourself doing really, really well. And write down what that felt like. And, you know, I would even write it down in the third person. You know, Richard was there when he was walking around school. And um, as he was walking, a teacher came up to him and said, you know what, are you applying for Cambridge? And he said, what do you mean? He said, you need to apply for Cambridge. And he said, what, me? And he said, yes, you, you can do it. And for you to write down those things and start to reflect on them, and build up a list. And as you've built that up inside, take some time to think for the people that you um, would like to see succeed in your life, who you interact with, friends, family workers, co-workers, how can you be that person for them? Absolutely. And as you're doing this exercise, whenever you feel like you might want to explore, like, what got into these people? What, how come that they believe in me so much? What, it, what are they thinking? But I want you to ask yourself the question a little bit differently. What are they thinking when they believe in you? When they just have such an unshakable belief that they say, hey, of course you can do this. <laughs> Why haven't you thought of this? Why aren't you doing this already? Of course you're going to be able to do this. What are they thinking? What might they be seeing in you that you are not seeing fully? And have fun with it, right? <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, Orestes. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Richard. And uh, if you could just quickly repeat where can people reach you or where they can uh, find uh, some of the work that you've been doing? Sure. Uh, sure. If you want to, uh, um, in fact, you can Google Richard Haggerty, H-A-G-G-E-R-T-Y. You'll find me there. I'm on Substack. I have a Substack called Awakening. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. Wonderful, wonderful. And of course, uh, we are apparently both of us have this uh, little gift from our parents. Uh, our names are not very common. Uh, with the <laughs> <laughs> of course, Excellent. Yes. Uh, Richard Haggerty and Orestes Murgach, uh, or something easier, lessanxietytoday.com. Love to see you there and hope to see you next week. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.